Hey, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Good day. Uh, uh, as promised, uh, I'm back again uh, 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 with the work, energy, and and power. Uh, we started uh, on Monday with work, energy, and power. Uh, so today I want to introduce to you the work on an inclined plane. The work on an inclined plane, as you can see there. Uh, so this uh, lesson is presented by me, Professor Mahona Zotli, Vakati KF. So I will be doing work on an inclined plane. So guys, uh, as you all know from grade 11, uh, if we have an what you call an object uh, on an inclined plane this is what an inclined plane uh, our Cartesian plane uh, will take uh, the direction of the of the plane as you can see the x-axis here on the Cartesian plane is in line with what with the plane of the slope with this plane okay it's in line with that so this will be our y y axis so uh, we've got an object which is maybe a box that is on an uh, inclined plane inclined plane now the normal force is going to be perpendicular to the surface it has to form 90 degrees with the surface but the fg 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 is going directly downward so as uh, we can see that fg is not in line with the Cartesian Cartesian plane since it is going directly downward. Okay, so we know that uh, we have to resolve FG into its components, which will be the the vertical component and the horizontal component, since it is acting at an angle. Okay, so this angle here is equal to the angle of the of the slope. This was discussed in detail when you're doing grade 11 so this angle is equal to that angle now since fg uh, is acting at an angle we have to resolve it into its uh, what to call uh, components vertical component and the horizontal component so the vertical component in this case is going to be fg perpendicular whereas the fg the horizontal the horizontal component of fg is going to be fg parallel okay so what will be the fg perpendicular so if you can take your pen and you put it directly on top of fg and you you cross it in such a way that it goes to fg perpendicular you will see that it crosses so if it cross we say that fg perpendicular is equals to fg cos beta so if it crosses an angle we say it's cos cross cos you see fg cos beta so that will be equal to fg perpendicular so if it doesn't cross like in this case if you put your pen here and you go like that you can see that it doesn't what it doesn't cross any angle so that will be sine sine fg parallel is equal to uh, sine beta where fg know that fg is equal to mg fg equals to mg so you can see that even fg equals to mg sine beta so we know that uh, wherever uh, what to call uh, uh, we've got what an object on an inclined plane so we've got the fg parallel that is going to influence its motion and then i put a note there nb uh, for every object on an inclined uh, plane there's what there's fg parallel pulling down the slope guys fg parallel always pulls down the slope if the object is going down the slope fg parallel is going to pull down the slope if the object is moving up the slope fg parallel is going to pull down the slope so fg parallel always pulls down the slope so i have what to call i have uh, what to call a prepared uh, worked example here 
I prepared worked example. So my worked examples is this one. So what do we have here? A, a 12 kg object is pulled for 5 meters up the slope that is inclined at 25 degrees. This is 25, not 2,5. 25 degrees to the horizontal by a force of 120 newtons. The object experiences a frictional force of 40 newtons. So on the diagram, we've got a 12 kg that is pulled up the slope with a force of 120 newtons. The angle of the slope is 25 degrees. Okay, this 25 degrees. We also have the frictional force. So with the frictional force, you know that it opposes the motion of an object. So the object will be moving in that direction. So the frictional force will be taking that. But since it is on the slope, it's inclined. It's an inclined plane. Remember, we have what? We have Fg parallel that is pulling down. It's pulling down the slope. Okay. Now, I've got what? I've got some, uh, what to call, uh, uh, um, uh, what to call, uh, questions. Uh, now we are asked to calculate the work done by the applied force. Okay. So I'll write, I'll write that here and let's see maybe, uh, solutions, solutions. Uh, the work done by the applied force so for a that will be the work done by the applied force is equal to the applied force multiplied by what change in x cos theta so we uh, do we did this on our previous lesson we did this so what is the value of the what is the magnitude of the applied force that is 120 uh, the displacement the displacement for what for five meters is pulled for five meters up the slope so the displacement is going to be five okay so what is the angle what is the angle uh, between the angle between the displacement and the force is going to be zero degrees because uh, the displacement is in that direction and the force is also in that direction same direction so the angle is going to be zero degrees so the work the work done by the applied force is going to be equal to what is this 120 times 5 uh, cos of zero degrees uh, this is going to give us 600 600 joules 600 joules so we've got 600 joules for the work done by what the work done by the applied applied force the work done by the applied force so for b the work done by what frictional the work done by frictional force so i can do b uh, on the next page uh, let's have b there b uh, the work done by the frictional force is going to be equal to the frictional force multiplied by what displacement cos of cos of theta so the magnitude of the frictional force there we are given the magnitude of the frictional force it is what 40 newtons so this is going to be 40 times the displacement is 5 cos of what cos of uh, 180 degrees where is this coming from uh, because the frictional force the direction of motion the displacement is going there and the frictional force is opposing the motion so the angle between what the displacement and the force this is going to be 180 degrees the angle between the frictional force and the uh, what to call the angle between the frictional force and the displacement is 180 degrees so this is going to give us uh, this is going to give us uh, this is will be uh, 40 times 
5 multiplied by cos 180. This is going to be negative 200. Negative 200, which is going to be 200 joules. This is the work done by the uh, frictional force. So see the work done by gravitational force. Work done by gravitational force. So C uh, is going to be work done by what? Gravity parallel is going to be FG parallel multiplied by displacement cos of theta. What is FG parallel? We know uh, that FG parallel, FG parallel is equal to mg sine beta. So this is going to be mg sine beta, where beta is the angle of the slope, angle of the slope, and then we say change in x cos of theta. So this is going to be 12 multiplied by 9,8 sine uh, what is the angle of the slope the angle of the slope here is 25 degrees 25 degrees sine 25 degrees displacement 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 is 5 and we see cos of 180 degrees 180 degrees that angle there 180 degrees so for work done by gravity parallel it's gonna be gonna have 12 times 9,8 multiply by sine 25 uh, multiply by 5 and then cos of 180 degrees what do we have we're going to have negative what call two four eight comma five zero joules so this is going to be two forty eight comma five zero joules now why do i write this as positive uh, it is uh, because uh, the the work work is a scalar quantity like we discussed a uh, good people i uh, hope you understand calculating what the work done by the uh, gravitational force so uh, the other questions will follow uh, thank you